Yes, good evening, it's Charlie ZL2CTM. Well, I just want to do uh, a video tonight on the transmit configuration that I'm going to use for this uh, this 20 meter portable rig. So what I've done, um, the last video, this, this board here was set up for the receive, and I've just rejigged it now to, um, to set it up for the transmit. Um, before I go into what the various stages are, you'll recall that what I wanted to do with this radio is have the the RF or the IF more the point going through the two um, the two RF amp the two IF amplifiers and the crystal filter in the same direction. But I didn't want to have a, a relay here that was crossing RF um, you know, backwards and forwards like I have done in the past because I had a lot of problems with uh, with feedback. So in this particular configuration, everything's now um, spaced nicely apart, um, and that was achieved by um, swapping the outputs of the SI5351. So in the receive configuration, um, this is the, the VFO, and this line here on clock 2 is the beat frequency oscillator, and then on transmit now, which is this configuration here, uh, in the software, I'm just monitoring the PTT line, and these are just reversed. So literally it's just a matter of changing uh, the, the 0 to a 2, and the 2 to a 0, and the outputs just uh, nicely swap over. Um, so that's what's been done there. Let me just unkey that because I don't have a um, a, a switch on the the, um, the amplifier there. So um, that was nice and simple. So now um, this mixer over here on the transmit side of the house becomes the balanced modulator. So and that means uh, on the IF port we have uh, the audio coming from the microphone. So this is the microphone coming in here through the microphone amplifier. Uh, for interest sake, that amplifier is exactly the same um, circuit that was used on the base rig, which was the build just prior to this particular radio here. Um, so if you look up on the blog, uh, you'll be able to see the circuit diagram for that particular one. So I've just reused exactly the same circuit because it was working really well. Uh, the output's just been dropped onto a, uh, a 10k trim pot, and then the wiper arm there is just going to the balance modulator IF port. Uh, that's now being mixed up to the IF, so uh, the output is coming from the RF port of that particular balance modulator there, uh, and then into the IF amplifier in exactly the same direction as we had for the receive. Uh, it comes out of the second IF amplifier and goes into the IF port um, of the carrier mixer here, um, and then that's mixed on uh, mixed up with our with our carrier frequency here. Um, the, those two mix, and the output is our desired uh, 20 meter transmit signal coming out on the RF port. Uh, that's going through the bandpass filter. That's exactly the same bandpass filter uh, that's used on the receive side of the house. So we're just filtering out those undesired mixing products uh, and just um, retaining our desired uh, 20 meter signal. Uh, then goes through that RF uh, driver amplifier that we did um, a couple of videos back. Um, the output of that is then going into a, um, a low pass filter there, a half wave low pass filter, uh, and then into our uh, our 50 ohm load there. So let me just come back again and have a quick look at that filter, and then we can talk some more about it. So like I say, that was a, um, a half wave um, low pass filter there, so uh, it's made up of uh, two inductors, in the series of the line and then our parallel capacitors so as you could imagine as our frequency increases noting this is a low pass filter our inductive reactance increases and our capacitive reactance decreases so at higher frequencies all our RF is being uh, either being blocked or shunted to earth it's a little more elaborate of that but that's a nice easy way of remembering uh, in terms of the configuration of these if it's a low pass or a high pass filter so in terms of actually the designing for this particular filter I'm going to use a loaded Q of 1, uh, and I want the input impedance and the output impedance to both look like 50 ohms. So I'll set that for 50. Um, and in doing so then, uh, in terms of uh, designing, I want to have uh, the inductive reactance for these two inductors to equal 50 ohms. And for these two outer capacitors here, I want the capacitive reactance to, um, to equal 50 ohms, but for the center one here, I want it to be half that, or 25 ohms. So these are these are our given design um, criteria, 
and then we'll reverse engineer and work out what the inductors and capacitors need to be um, to achieve that. And just from, as a reminder, um, our inductive reactance equals 2 pi FL, our frequency times our inductance, and our capacitive reactance is 1 over 2 pi FC, again frequency times our capacitance. Um, I'm going to use uh, for the toroid cores for these two inductors here, uh, T50-6, um, and if I, if I look at the uh, the toroids.org site, which is pointed to by kits and parts, uh, it talks about that core there being suitable for 3 to 40 megahertz, um, which would be just ideal for uh, for this 20 meter low pass filter. And I'm going to use uh, number 24 gauge wire for that, uh, which is over here. Right. Um, so in terms of our uh, cutoff frequency, uh, I'm going to set the uh, the minus 3 dB point for this low pass filter to be 14.5 megahertz um, as a starter for 10. Right. So having now uh, set what our inductive and our capacitor reactances need to be, uh, and our our frequency, our cutoff frequency there, we can now substitute all of those into our inductive in this case for the uh, inductor here, our inductive reactance formula and then solve for the inductance. So again just rearranging this formula to make the inductance um, the subject and then substituting in. There goes our XL, 2 pi and there goes our frequency there. That comes out to be 0.549 microhenries uh, and then if you use the online calculator for um, that particular core there it turns out to be um, 11.7 turns, so we'll just round it up. It's pretty close to 12 turns, so we'll live with that. We'll round it up to 12 turns. Uh, in terms of our capacitive reactants, uh, these, we'll do the two outer ones first, and then we'll look at the inner one. So the outer ones we said wanted to equal 50 ohms, so again just rearranging our formula for capacitive reactants to make our capacitor the subject, which is nice and easy. We just move capacitor up to there and move that inductive uh, reactance down to here and then solve for our capacitance. Again, substituting the parts in, working it out, comes out to be 219 picofarads, which is pretty close to 220, so we'll use 220 picofarads for that. Um, and now for our, our center capacitor there, that's the one we're going to set to have a capacitive reactance of 25 ohms. Um, exactly the same scenario, make the capacitor um, the subject in the formula, uh, and then solve using 25 ohms. That comes out to be 439 picofarads. So I'm going to round that to 440 puff, which means I can use two 220 picofarad capacitors in parallel. Uh, again, just remembering capacitors in parallel, we add the, the capacitance together to get the overall uh, total capacitance. Uh, and that's what we see down there, if we were to turn it sideways. We can see our C1s at the end, and then the uh, the two 220 picofarad capacitors for the middle there. Right, so, um, so just keying it up again. Um, I'm just going to come back and look at the old. You see, my voice is coming through already. Yeah, g'day ZL2, Charlie Tango mic testing, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So um, that's not looking too bad at this stage. Um, I haven't really tried to uh, uh, fine tune anything in terms of the, the value of the output of the microphone amplifier. Um, but uh, I think at this stage again that's looking pretty good. Uh, in terms of what that's producing um, over, the over the 50 ohm load, uh, in this current configuration that is um, spot on 1 watt, so 1 watt's been uh, dropped into here, um, and that will be the drive for the overall the power amplifier. At this stage of the game that's uh, looking to be uh, an RF 510, uh, single ended, nice and easy, just to boost that um, that 1 watt up to uh, around five. Um, we'll see how we go there, but uh, just to keep sort of the, the uh, battery um, lasting as long as I can, about five watts should be about right. Uh, I did play around down here, the output of that band pass filter. I did um, use, if I can just plug out the box, uh, I played around with inserting in there the antenna amplifier. So on the receive circuit, this comes off the uh, antenna before going into the band pass filter there. Uh, I had that in circuit, works perfectly fine, uh, and then that boosted, uh, in terms of this configuration here, uh, up to 2.5 watts. Um, I've decided to take that out, um, I'm quite happy with 1 watt being sufficient to drive um, the power amplifier. 
So anyway, so that's all I wanted to cover there, just a, a quick run through uh, the transmit configuration and um, I'm certainly quite happy, at, at the moment there's no shielding here uh, between, admittedly it's only one watt here, between the output of that low pass filter and uh, the IF amps, um, doesn't seem to be any uh, interference that I can see uh, in the scope picture which bodes well for squeezing this down into that, um, that lunch box which will be the final container. Um, but I will actually, like I have done in the past, I'll have some um, a decent amount of shielding uh, between the low power and the high power sides of the circuit, um, including between uh, the driver, if I can, uh, and the power amplifier. But anyway, so uh, I won't uh, go on any further. Um, I'm pretty happy with that, and like I say, uh, this is certainly working well, uh, having the, the IF going through uh, in the one direction, no elaborate crossover here, and just doing the switching in terms of what the inputs and outputs are uh, of those two mixes uh, here and here, uh, which is good. And then just, like I say, swapping uh, what was the VFO and the BFO just directly over um, for the transmit side of the house, which is nice and easy to do in software, uh, and um, working perfectly fine. Okay, I'll say 73 is there, uh, put that up, and uh, got another business trip coming up, so I won't be doing any more for a little while, but um, like I say, I think all the... Um, Everything's in place now to to put this into the container. Um, prior to doing that, though, I will just have a quick look at that uh, IRF 510, um, a single inner one. That's something I haven't done before, so uh, that'll be quite good to see how that performs. Uh, I won't bother with a push pull; just go for a straight single ended, which will be good. Okay, 73s once again. Um, take care, and uh, we'll talk to you next time. Cheers.